Chapter 24 Indirect Influence Let us now pass on to a consideration of the second class of telementation, which I call indirect telementation, or the use of the force with a general purpose of affecting the desired result without special direction toward any particular person or persons. This form of manifestation of telementation may be grouped into two subclasses, viz. a. In which the general desire or will of the individual to attain certain results manifests itself in personal interviews and induces mental states in those with whom he comes in contact, and b. In cases wherein the general desire and will manifest in telementative currents or waves or whirlpools, affecting all persons and things who are interested in any way in the enterprise, scheme, plan, or undertaking of the individual, intending to cause them to fall into line and obey the will or comply with the desires of the general plan of the individual. This last form of telementative influence is far more common than one would suppose. Strong, positive men start into motion waves and currents that sweep over the country, gathering force with each added impetus and using the principle of mental contagion to increase its influence. Great leaders of men are centers of these mentative whirlpools and similar forms of mentative influence and draw in or suck into themselves persons, things, and objects conducive to their plans and ambitions. They do not have it all their own way, of course, for there are many influences at work which tend to neutralize their efforts. Other men have conflicting schemes which interfere with and often destroy the influence of these great mentators, and people are becoming educated regarding the nature of the forces they employ and will not accept adverse suggestions or allow their vibrations to influence them. Still, the force is still used to great effect by many politicians and other persons who reach out toward large numbers of people. Leading generals of business also make use of the force in this manner and draw things their way. In fact, nearly everybody who does business with people scattered over a large territory employs this force more or less, generally unconsciously. And many of these uses work no harm upon those affected, because many of these people are engaged in legitimate enterprise and want always to give a square deal and a good dollar's worth. I am not holding up this manifestation of telementation as reprehensible. I am merely stating its general laws and forms of manifestation. One may repel these mentative waves in the same way, and by the same methods mentioned in the preceding chapters in reference to the repelling of direct telementation. The rule is the same in both cases, for the principle involved is the same. Before leaving this branch of the subject, I would remind you that one may take advantage of this last-mentioned form of telementation for his own good, in a perfectly proper and justifiable way. One may wish to gain certain information and knowledge about certain subjects. If so, if he will hold a strong desire that the desired knowledge shall come to his notice and attention, and if at the same time he wills that the mentative currents flow forth in search of persons, things, and objects capable of imparting the knowledge or information, he will get results. He will find that after a while he will run across people who will be glad to give him the information he wants, or he will pick up a book that will either tell him what he wants, or else will refer to some other book or subject that will point out the path to him. These instances are quite common and afford wonderful proofs of the laws herein stated. In this way, no one is harmed and mutual benefits are obtained. People are attracted to each other in this way, and each finds his own. The above manifestation results from the operation of what has been called the law of attraction, by the workings of which each person is continually drawing to himself the people, things, objects, and even circumstances in harmony and accord with his prevailing mental states, like attracts like, and the mental states determine that which one draws to himself. If you are not satisfied with what is coming to you, start to work and change your mental attitudes and mental states, and you will see a change gradually setting in, and things that you want will begin to come your way. This law of attraction has been much written about in works on mental science during the past 10 years, so it is not necessary for me to go into details about it here. I have given you the general principles in this chapter, and you may apply them accordingly. A most important fact about the effect of mentative vibrations upon people lies in the principle that one is more affected by vibrations in harmony with his own accustomed feelings and mental states than by those of opposite natures. A man who is full of evil schemes and selfish aims is more apt to be caught up by similar vibrations than one who lives above that plane of thought. He is more easily tempted by evil suggestions and influences than one to whom these things are abhorrent. 
and the same is true on every plane. A man whose mental attitude is one of confidence and fearlessness is not apt to be affected by vibrations of a negative, pessimistic, gloomy nature, and vice versa. Therefore, if you wish to receive the vibrations of the thoughts and feelings of others, you must place yourself in a mental attitude corresponding with those vibrations you wish to receive. And if you wish to avoid vibrations of a certain kind, the best way is to rise above them in your own mind and to cultivate mental states opposite to them. The positive always overcomes the negative, and optimistic mental states are always positive to pessimistic mental states. The sense of individuality and one's relation to the universal mind power is the strongest and most positive mental state one can attain. Therefore cultivate it, first, last, and all the time. I now come to a phase of the subject that underlies all of the phenomena of telementation and really gives the key to much of its wonderful effects. I allude to what occultists know as visualization. This visualization is to telementation what the pattern is to the maker of objects, what the plans of the architect are to the builders, what the mold or matrix is to molders of metal. It is the skeleton around which the materialization of thought forms occurs. It is of the greatest importance to you to acquaint yourselves with its laws and effects. To visualize means to see mentally, that is, to form a mental image of a thing, to see it in one's mind, etc. Visualization, along the lines of one's daily occupation, is a most important thing, but one that is very poorly appreciated because little understood. The best workmen, writers, inventors, composers, etc., are those who are able to see the thing in the mind and then reproduce it in materialized form. Sir Francis Calton, one of the best authorities upon the subject, has said, The free action of a vivid visualizing faculty is of much importance in connection with the higher processes of generalized thought. A visual image is the most perfect form of mental representation wherever the shape, position, and relations of objects to space are concerned. The best workmen are those who visualize the whole of what they propose to do before they take a tool in their hand. Strategists, artists of all denominations, physicists who contrive new experiments, and in short, all who do not follow routine, have need of it. A faculty that is of importance in all technical and artistic occupations, that gives accuracy to our perceptions and justice to our generalizations, is starved by lazy disuse instead of being cultivated judiciously in such a way as will, on the whole, bring the best return. I believe that a serious study of the best means of developing and utilizing this faculty, without prejudice to the practice of abstract thought and symbols, is one of the many pressing desiderata in the yet unformed science of education. And all that Sir Francis Calton has said above is equally true of the cultivation of the art of visualization in connection with telementation. The trouble with the majority of people is that they do not know just what they do want. They are not able to form clear mental images of that which they wish to create or materialize. The men who obtain the greatest and most wonderful results through mentative influence, particularly in the form of telementation, are those men who are able to visualize most clearly the things that they wish to materialize, who are able to form the mental image of the things they wish to manifest. The secret of visualization lies in the occult and psychological principle that, as is the mental matrix, so is the mental form, and as is the mental form, so is the physical materialization. In other words, the visualized mental image is the matrix or mold into which the mind power is poured, and from which it takes form, and around this mental image the deposit of. Materialization forms, and thus does the ideal become the real. If you wish to get the best effects from mind power, you must create a mental image around which the material or physical materialization is formed, and the way to form the proper mental image is by visualization, which thus builds up the matrix or mold in which the mind power pours. And as is the matrix, so is the image, and as is the image, so is the materialization. Before you can draw to you the material needed for building up the things or conditions you desire, you must form a clear mental image of just what you want to materialize. And before you can make this mental image, you must realize mentally just exactly what you do desire. And the process of this is called visualization. That is, you build up a mental matrix or mold, little by little, until you have it before you clearly, until it stands out clearly formed as a mental image, just as you would see it if it were actually materialized. Then you must hold this mental image before you constantly, 
regarding it not as a mere imagination, but as a something real which you have created in your mind, and which will proceed to surround itself with the material necessary to give it material objectivity or materialization. If you cannot see the whole thing at first, as a mental image, that is, if you are not able to build up a complete matrix by visualization, then do the next best thing, which is the very best thing for the majority of people, and build a matrix of the first step toward the whole thing, that is, the first thing that is needed. Then concentrate upon this first thing until the mental image stands out sharp and clear, and you will find that things have been started in motion. Then, you may add little by little to your matrix, and build up your mental image a little larger and in greater detail. And here is an important thing. You must mentally see the thing as actually existing, right now, and not as going to exist later on. You must realize that the mental image exists right now, else it will lack clearness and effectiveness. You must pour into that mental image a constant supply of strong, positive desire force and willpower, all of which will spread out in the proper directions and affect the material needed to materialize your mental image. By so doing you impart to the mentative currents the necessary impetus and direction, and they will operate along these lines, and will proceed to materialize your mental image for you. Things will come your way. People will appear who are necessary to your plans. Information will come to you from strange sources and in unexpected times and places. Opportunities will open themselves up to you. But remember this, that you must be prepared to act upon these openings and opportunities. You must be alert and watchful and expectant. You will have to do the work, remember, yourself. Although the forces you have started into operation will supply you with the material, the door will be open to you, but you must step in yourself. The tools and materials will be provided you, but you must use them. The information will be laid before you, but you must make it your own. Even mind power will not avail the lazy man. You must learn to do things yourself. This subject of visualization would fill a book by itself, but I hope that I have been able to give you a clear idea of its working principles. Remember always this rule, this triple key of attainment, as I have often called it. I, you must desire a thing most intensely. Two, then you must earnestly expect it. Three, then you must use your will in the direction of action tending to bring it about. But first of all, as I have said, you must know just what you do want, and then proceed to create the mental matrix or mold by visualization. That is, you must proceed to mentally see it as already existing. This chapter must be read and studied in connection with the chapters preceding it, for they blend into each other, and the information laps. I have given you certain principles, in plain, practical form, which may seem so simple to you as to be passed over without the proper consideration and examination. Do not make this mistake, I pray you. Do not long for high-sounding terms and mystical verbiage. The truth is capable of being expressed without these fancy trappings or drapery. I have tried to tell you the principle of these things, but you must study carefully in order to grasp every point. I have boiled down and condensed a great deal of information into this lesson. Be sure that you do not allow any of the points to escape you. You cannot expect to acquaint yourself fully with this subject in one hasty reading. You must read and reread many times, with careful study and thought. You must do some thinking on your own account, in order to apply these general principles to your own symptoms and needs. You must read carefully, and then think a little. There is no royal road to mind power, or anything else. I have tried to make the road a little easier for you, but you must do the traveling yourself. You cannot reach the heights by proxy. You must digest these things yourself. Predigested ideas will do you no good. Underlying all of these wonderful manifestations of telementation, there is just the simple principle that I have pointed out to you, induction of mental states by desire force and willpower. Everything occurs by reason of this principle. You may think that the book that you needed and which came to you so wonderfully, must have arrived in some other way. Not so. The book was placed here, and moved there, by people. And these people have minds capable of being moved by vibratory waves. And so when once the thing was set into operation, all things worked together toward the given end. Even the present book reached you under the law of attraction. There is no chance in these matters. There are laws in operation everywhere, and always. And over all there is the great law. And, now in concluding this chapter, I would remind you to always realize that you are centers of living mental energy in the great ocean of mind power. 
and that you are strong in the degree that you are positive, and that you are positive in the degree that you are an individual, and you are an individual in the degree that you realize that you are a center of living will. There is nothing to fear but fear. You are capable of asserting your individuality always and everywhere. Your only chains are those you forge for yourself. You are free right now, here, and always. Do not be deluded by the petty things of personality that pass away and perish overnight, but rest serene and firm in the consciousness that you are an individual living will center, and fear not to assert the individual I. There is no devil but fear. Nothing but fear can keep you from your own heritage and birthright. Assert the I and banish fear.